Welcome to this episode of Guess Who's Coming, where we navigate the adventures of living gluten-free. Today, we are joined by Matt, the dynamic force behind the Instagram page Gluten-Free Street Gang. He's here to share his story and how he's turned his gluten-free lifestyle into an inspiring journey of travel, food, and community. Welcome, Matt. Thank you so much. Happy to be here. I'm so happy to have you. So, I mean, please share your backstory, you know, uh, how did you come to realize you needed to follow a gluten-free diet? And, you know, the kind of question that when you have a gluten-free person, like, oh my God, how did you discover it? So Good. there you go. Yeah. So it's kind of, um, it's a long story for me. Uh, it was about... We are in the perfect spot. So, you know, share everything. <laughs> and I've got the mic, so it's yeah. perfect. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, about 12 years ago, uh, I came back to the U.S. from a study abroad in Prague. Um, and without warning, I was just really, really sick. Okay. Um, brain fog, GI issues, I'm not going to go further than that. Wow. Um, uh, I gained weight. It was not great. Like my grades in uni were doing poorly because I was qu quite sick. Mm -hmm. uh, I was still seeing my pediatrician who told me that I probably have celiac disease, but I didn't get any rubber testing and I didn't know to advocate for myself and that I could go see a GI doctor. Mm -hmm. So about seven years later, six or seven years later, I uh, was sick again and went to my actual adult doctor who told me that uh, uh, to have celiac diagnosis, I need to get the actual full testing. So sure. he referred me, I got everything tested um and he came back and basically said that i have ibs mm -hmm. and my issue is specifically with fructans which include wheat barley and rye so that's part of why the gluten-free diet works so well but also why i can't have things like courgettes sure. um i still say gluten-free just because it's at this point it's, it's a personality yeah and um i totally get that yeah it's easier saying i can't do gluten than yeah. i can't do fructans yeah um, restaurants people are like what, what what is that you know yeah, and Majority explaining time. that every single time yeah. can get old. So saying gluten kind of gets the job done. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, when I when I was growing up, because I, I discovered when I was 11 years old, um, I always had a card with me that was explaining what celiac was in every single language in the world. Smart. Uh, but like my quote was always like, hi, I'm the gluten-free girl, because I started like traveling mm. when I was pretty young. Mm -hmm. And so it's I totally get when you say it's part of your personality uh, so that's amazing. So you're, where are you from? Like, can you tell me a little bit about that background of yourself? Also a long story. Um, yeah, don't worry. <laughs> so I was born in Bermuda, uh, lived there till I was 10. Then I moved to Massachusetts with my family. Um, my parents mostly grew up around Massachusetts. So they moved home. I moved abroad. Um, I spent time there, a bit of time in California as well. Um, and moved to London about five years ago. Okay. And... Uh, yeah, that's where I'm from. That's amazing. And how, like, uh, so you got diagnosed when you were in the States, right? Yes. So how, like, do you think it's the main difference? Like, have you heard of being, like, celiac in general before? Like, did you know anything about, like, the gluten-free word before being diagnosed? Like, I know, like, you're not gluten-free. We just said that. But, you know... Um, when I got diagnosed, like, the only thing I knew about gluten was that occasionally I would see like on cars, like bumper stickers that said, I heart gluten. Okay. And <laughs> uh, I knew nothing about celiac. I knew nothing about gluten. I knew nothing about why wheat's a bad thing. Okay. I just knew that it can be an issue. Sure. Um, and yeah, it was really isolating in the States. Most of my friends had no idea how to handle me. And I talk mm. about this a lot on my Instagram, but like there is something very shameful about like being in like a basin party where like everyone is drinking out of, out of a keg of beer oh, and yeah. I have like a bottle of wine by myself. Yeah. It's oh my a God. very, <laughs> like, it's, it's a very different vibe. <laughs> I um, yeah, I hear it seems to be more well understood. Exactly. Um, yeah. and in the U S I don't know the, this, there's more optionality for like products and grocery stores yeah. uh, that are really, really interesting. I find eating out here a lot easier. Sure. So pros and cons. No, I mean, uh, I'm smiling because I had a fun story when I was in LA. Um, yeah. I was around like 20 and I remember that I was uh, in this restaurant and I always feel like kind of comfortable when I'm traveling because I feel like Italy came uh, later with like... Uh, offering, you know, gluten-free products and mm -hmm. options. And I remember going to this restaurant and I asked the waiter, of course, I was like, hi, I'm, I'm gluten-free. And he was like, girl, don't worry. We have everything free, sugar-free, lactose-free. And I was like, 
Um, and then my Italian accent, I was like, no, 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 but wait, um, I am celiac in a way that if you put a little bit of flour, you know, I can be sick. So it was like, just, I, for the first time, I kind of understood that could be a trend also being mm-hmm. gluten-free. So I always have to be specific, you know, and it's always like pretty, pretty fun. But since you like, I mean, since you were born, you traveled pretty much ev- everywhere in a way. <laughs> so how do you um, bring your, you know, diet with you all around the world? Like, how is the, is that your relationship with traveling and being, you know, I mean, let's say gluten-free, but, yeah. you know, okay. <laughs> so um, uh, it's funny, I'm smiling because that sounds yeah. very much like LA when, like, when I was there. Like, uh-huh. uh, there was, that was the first thing that I really felt at home being uh-huh. gluten-free, but also it was almost a bit too far where like uh, everything was gluten-free and vegan and sugar-free. Yeah. Like, like I... Lactose-free, like, everything free. I'm like, that's great for optionality, but like, give me the cheese, yeah. like, give me the sugar, like it's <laughs> exactly. fine. Exactly. <laughs> um, uh, as far as traveling goes... Um, I mean, like when I first got diagnosed, like I thought that that was it, and it was this oh, like my traveling days were over. Like uh, I thought, what can I eat? Like I'm never going to be able to go back to Europe and have another croissant again. Like when I was growing up, like my dad had a lot of work over in on the continent, so we would travel to Europe a lot, and I I loved it, and I th- I really thought that that was it. Mm-hmm. Um, it was through Instagram that I found out that oh, you can actually eat quite well all around the world sure. with uh while being gluten free. Um. And it does help to have an audience of 100,000 followers that when I'm going somewhere, I can just say, hey, where should I eat in Absolutely. Madrid? Where should I eat? Where can I eat in New York? Um, but it's a lot easier than ever just because of all the bloggers, all the restaurants, all the yeah. apps. Like it's uh, it's so much easier to find gluten-free food these sure. days. But how did you start with social media? Like with, you know, also talking about it, about your diet and everything. Uh, so... Um, the, it was back in 2018. Uh, I was at like, in the U.S. Starbucks used to have a gluten-free breakfast sandwich that was just, I mean, like good for your soul, but probably terrible for you with like calories and all that. But mm-hmm. um, it was really good. And there's one morning I was probably hungover. I went to spin class and then <laughs> Starbucks for my uh, giant iced coffee and my breakfast sandwich. And they told me that they don't make the sandwich anymore. And I kind of was asking, oh, when are you going to have the sandwich back in stock? Only to be met with, no, it's been discontinued. Starbucks no longer carries that. Sure. And something inside of me just broke mm-hmm. where I thought, like, can we have just one nice thing? Like, this yeah. diet is ridiculous. Like, this life is ridiculous. Uh, and I started making memes as a coping mechanism. Mm-hmm. So if you go back far enough on my Instagram, you'll find, like, the early memes where I'm just, like, uh, I'm tearing into Starbucks. Um, and, like, I will I will take my dying breath, and then I will come back to life to talk about this breakfast sandwich one more time. Yeah. Um, so that's what got me started. Yeah. And at the time, there were some people making gluten-free memes, but they were... Mm-hmm. Um, they were about five years out of date with the sure. meme formats. They were the rage faces, like mm-hmm. the bad luck Brian's, um, that penguin meme, uh, that weren't as relevant one, the uh like like the Twitter-based memes that we know today were kind of yeah. starting to take off. So I was going with that format. And that kind of humor really resonated. That format really resonated and took off. And I realized I kind of enjoyed doing it. So and you decided like a gluten-free street gang? Like were was there, I don't know, an inspiration behind that or I played on a uh, soccer or football team, depending on where you are in the world. Um, okay. That was called Retirement Home Street Gang. Oh, and when I love I, it. And the name for the account came from that. Okay, cool. And since you like, uh, since you started um, posting on social media, was that like just out of passion and just like to be again, like you said, just put your frustration there? And how like did that change in a way? Like when did you notice that communicating and talking on social media was, you know? cool and you know started to create a community also maybe it took a while to really get going but um yeah. at, like within like a few weeks of making the account like this my audience really really started skyrocketing up and i realized i kind of enjoyed it it was mostly just a coping skill and a mechanism and an outlet at first yeah. but then i realized oh this is not just me and this is my first time really interacting with anyone that had uh gluten-free needs outside of my own so that's it really gave me fuel to keep going and that, hey, I'm actually bonding with people. I'm actually making friends. Like we're actually getting along. And I mean, it's changed a little bit because when I moved to the UK, I started talking more about food, talking more about what you can eat in Europe. And I know that appeals to audience, both sides of the Atlantic. Um, 
but I, the community on Instagram is actually wonderful. And uh, it's given me a sense of place that I really wish that I had 12 years ago. Of course, absolutely. Yeah, because again, um, I remember when I first uh, was diagnosed with uh, celiac disease and everything. It was like, oh my God, I'm the only one that I know yeah. that has this diagnosis. So I always felt like the loser, the, the problematic one, the problematic friend. Feeling. I was like, oh my God. Uh, but I, I, I think like the more I'm, I'm growing up and also I see on social media so many people there gluten-free that talk about like gluten-free places and everything. And um, how is your relationship with your diet and also being here in London? Like, do you find that there's so many options? Because I feel like there's so many restaurants or again, options that have you know, for us. And uh, how do you feel living here with your diet and everything? I mean, I love living here for more reasons than just my diet, but the, di Absolutely. Di yeah, the yeah, diet yeah. really, really helps. Yeah. Um, there are so many restaurants that you can, I can go to that we can go to. Um, there yeah. are uh, so many different kinds of food that we can have. Um, I, I feel safe eating out in a way that I didn't really feel like in most of the U.S. where you say I'm gluten-free and they only vaguely know what you're talking mm -hmm. about. And you can have that experience here. I'm sure, sure. You've, you've had that same experience where you go out and say you're gluten-free, you have celiac. Yeah. And the response that you get is just not very, yeah, yeah, yeah. very confidence-inspiring. Um, I love how many options there are here. I love how... Uh, how diverse the food scene is. I feel that there are some other content creator friends who are gluten free in London who will find restaurants that I've never heard of that have been sure. open for years. And like, how that? How did I not know about yeah. this place? And it's just because there's there is so much. And it's also such a big city that you can find just anything. I think. I think. Hundred you know? percent. And so, um, since you're here, it's more like easy for you to travel. Like, uh, how does how did your relationship with your diet kind of in a way transform? Like now you feel it's a it's a plus. It's part of your personality. You said so. Are you more comfortable right now, like traveling all around maybe Europe because here it's easier, you know. A hundred percent. Um, it's definitely more comfortable, and I'm sure you know having American friends. Like it yeah. can sound like you're bragging when you just say, "No, yeah, I'm I live going... in Europe. I can go, you know, take a plane and just like, yeah." <laughs> like a couple of weeks ago, I went to Paris for one day. Yeah, and yeah. I was on the seven a.m. Eurostar back in my bed at eleven p.m. and it was Love it. awesome. Like, yeah. but to like outside of Europe, that probably sounds ridiculous. Yes. Um, I. I find it quite easy for most of Europe. I'm sure you know that not every country in Europe is created sure. equally, but even different parts of countries can be difficult. Mm -hmm. Like in my experience, Paris can be easy. There are so many options. There are so many bakeries, so many restaurants outside of Paris. It's a bit of a different story sure. where gluten is in everything. Uh, I was skiing in Chamonix a few years ago, and I felt like it was a completely different country than mm -hmm. Paris um, as far as the restaurant scene. Uh, Italy, I'm sure you know, is wonderful. Oh, Spain yeah. is wonderful. Uh, yeah. Germany, abandon hope. Mm -hmm. um, but for the most part, I do feel equipped to travel and uh, eat well while I do it. I love it. And also, um, do you have a chance to, because before you said that you made friends through like social media in general, and you actually, I don't know, had maybe ever had a meetup with people in a different city and you guys went, I don't know, eating some gluten-free stuff together? Like, have you ever, you know, met somebody through that? Oh, 100%. Um, I met Catalina, who's in the other room. Yes, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know. Uh, we got together when I was visiting Florence, uh, visiting my boyfriend's um, brother and his fiance. Uh, we went to Scrano and had sandwiches. And uh, whenever I go back to the U.S., I if I go back to New York to see my in real life friends, I will try to get together with my Instagram friends as well. To That's so beautiful. Add, eat it at a new place, just catch up and have a, have people around who understand exactly what this diet needs. Oh yeah, absolutely. And also um, how like from, you know, your start on social media, how did your way of communicating kind of change with your audience? Like you gained a little bit more confidence into maybe do videos where you talked about like I don't know, suggesting a restaurant rather than do memes, of course, that you're right. well known and we love that about you. Um, so, yeah. It was, it took me a while to actually be okay putting my face on the internet. I was mm -hmm. a faceless account for a couple of years. Uh, oh, yeah? Yeah. This, if you go back far enough, like my profile picture was the certified gluten free logo. Okay. Uh, it was just memes. There was none of me. Um, I worried about what that kind of publicity would bring. And turns out the worry was kind of unfounded to this mm -hmm. point. Oh, um, yeah, for sure. Uh, the 
the it, it took me a while to be that kind of that level of confident and to feel like I could actually connect with my audience in that way. I do feel like social media has kind of almost gone a bit too far where influencer culture is yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. is just inauthentic and yeah. people want connection. And also I want connection. I want to feel like Absolutely. I'm having an impact and uh, like putting my face behind what I'm saying and showing that, hey, I stand by yeah. what I say and what I do. Exactly. Uh, I think that it's important that these kind of unscripted or lightly scripted talking yeah. videos are the way forward. So uh, since you got diagnosed uh, and maybe you saw like with your diet and everything was, you know, you felt kind of weird or whatever. Like now, uh, what is the best thing that happened to you since you got diagnosed? Like you collaborated with, I don't know, a restaurant or you try, I don't know, like something maybe that was cool to tell. There are lots of little cool things that have happened to me in the last okay. few years. Uh, I think one thing that stayed the same is I still at times feel awkward going to a restaurant mm -hmm. and saying I'm gluten free. I, just, I feel like it's I've gotten used to it. It's never gotten less yeah. uncomfortable than it is. Yeah. Um, but there's a restaurant or a donut shop in Boston that whenever I'm in Boston, they give me a dozen donuts to shoot content with. No um, there, I got invited to go on, uh, there's a, a cruise called Celiac Cruise. They've invited me on their river cruise no way. this fall. I'm so excited about that. No way. Uh, I've worked with so many brands. I've been to so many restaurants that I never thought possible. A couple of weeks ago, I went to a, like, I got invited to a two Michelin star restaurant wow. that could cater a fully celiac safe gluten free tasting menu. That's uh, amazing. It's given me a, like just unparalleled insight into the gluten-free world and what options are out there. And I'm just so happy that I get the chance to experience it and tell everyone else about it. Amazing. So like starting out with social media kind of as a, I mean, as a, as a joke, let's say that. Um, how do you see your account like in the future? Like you see maybe you want to continue to do social media or was just like out of a passion that you just kept aside or you feel like, you know, since you started growing out a community, you want to say more, you want to do more. Like, what are your plans for the future? Tell us. Great question. Uh, I feel like the work that I'm doing on social media with gluten-free food uh, gives me a passion for my work that I've just not really had in my professional life to date. So I really want to see where this goes and see what I can do with it. Absolutely. I'm looking at doing more work within travel, within both in Europe and in the U.S., uh, looking with more brand collaborations and trying to kind of grow my Absolutely. revenue that way as well. But also trying to, I have a blog now. I'm trying to get more word out. Like I prefer writing. I prefer that as yeah. a content what, what's style. What's the name of your blog? Glutenfreestreetgang.net. I love it. So okay. Nice and easy. Um, uh, I'm just trying to continue to show my audience at the end of the day sure. how many options that there are in the world and how just because you have a dietary restriction because you're gluten-free, celiac, intolerant, whatever, uh, does not mean that your life is over, that you can't travel, that you can't eat damn good while doing it. Exactly. Yeah, let's say that. And also, um, since you're from, like, you, you lived in the States, like, how did your relationship kind of, like, change? Like, would, you just said that you would like to... Uh, maybe collaborate more with brands there and like don't you feel like you want to also create a community there in the states where you feel more safe since you know you felt more comfortable kind of here in a way i feel like for my american audience the value add is mm -hmm. showing how things can be in europe uh yes. right now my life is here uh yeah, i yeah, love living sure. here and uh my I feel like for tax reasons, I only get so many days inside of the UK. So <laughs> going to the US and physically creating community is difficult. Sure. Uh, I hope that I can show that there is a way forward yeah. and help empower people in the US that, that's to connect with me and help live their best gluten-free lives. So like, do you, are you a cook? I love to cook. Okay. I am terrible at plating food. Okay. So you will not see me posting a lot of the food that yeah. I make because it, tastes really good okay. but it looks it, it does not look like, yeah, the, like the taste <laughs> is the only thing that matter you know uh and since you got diagnosed like you feel like you become became more creative with the you know cooking your food or you know just like being in the kitchen all day and experiment and being creative with the food it made me 
it, by necessity, it, it had to, right? Like I had oh, to get yeah. comfortable cooking, to, to cooking more food that I otherwise would. I had never made ramen before I was gluten-free. And then realizing I could really use some ramen right now, yeah. having to figure out, okay, well, what goes into the broth? What, yeah. what noodles can I get that work? Like what toppings can I get? How can I make it all just work? Yeah. Uh, as an example, it's I've had to get more creative. So uh, since you are a traveler, because you travel a lot, like what are your tips, you know, for people who have a diet or are a little scared to travel because of the of their diet? Good question. And <laughs> I, my biggest tip is always pack snacks and like, 100%. Like yeah. I bring an entire carry on devoted to snacks. I personally get very hangry when yeah. I don't get to eat. And it's just like a, a, a mix between hangry and hungry, you know, just being hangry. Oh, ex exactly. For, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I always tell people, uh, come prepared. Um, It, depending on where you are going, it can be easy. It can be tough. Uh, Absolutely. If you're going some, like, look at apps like Find Me Gluten Free, look at Atlee. There are a few other various map platforms and find restaurants that look comfortable, that look good for you. Find influencers who live in these cities. Oh, yeah. I, I know there's, like, in the US, um, there's a website called Spoken that maintains a list of bloggers by state. So oh, you can see. No way. Yeah, there's, there's a so lot cool. of, oh, there's a lot of information out there for, um, for travel in different places and they can help guide you to restaurants that are safe. Facebook groups are also really helpful. Like there's a gluten-free London group, there's a gluten-free uh, Boston, Massachusetts group. There's gluten people in Bermuda where I'm from. Um, and really getting that local insight for the them boots in the ground for lack of a better term is Absolutely. the way to go. Amazing. So you said, so when did you start doing your writing on your blog? Is that something that you just started out or... I've been writing on and off for a few years, and I'm a okay. master procrastinator. So okay. <laughs> I had like a website. You know, it happens. Yeah, it's, life gets in the way. Um, <laughs> I bought the domain two years ago. Okay. And I was kind of, I was writing a few posts here and there um, in addition to creating videos. Um, it took me a while to actually get that off the ground. And I told myself when I hit 100,000 followers, I'm going to launch my blog. Okay. And this year I started off with about 80,000. I had a couple of videos go viral and I realized that I'm going to hit 100,000 followers in April. Okay. So uh, it, I spent a lot of time rushing, getting it all together, getting a few posts up. They were of high quality and I'm still trying to get a couple posts out per month. Amazing. So like, what's your goal when you write on your blog? Like, what's your focus? Right now, I'm trying to focus on guides. My mm -hmm. biggest question that I get asked is, hey, I see you go to New York a lot. I see you live in London. Where can I eat in these places? And I think the content that's most helpful is people want my take on where are the best restaurants to eat in Absolutely. these various major cities or in these, in these countries. Amazing. That's my biggest focus right now. Amazing. So we, you know, like let people know that you need to hit, I don't know, uh, what, 200,000, what, what is your next goal to post another article? So let's say to people so that we can, you know, help you with that, with against your pr procrastination. <laughs> it's a strong motivating factor. Exactly. Sure. <laughs> okay. I feel like, you know, it's been great, Matt. Thank you so much. And we'll, you know, follow you and guys follow him for the greatest tips here and there. If you're in London, you know, Who to write to so thank you so much thank you for having me i appreciate it there you go 